It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Hi guys and welcome back to the YouTube channel VAG Technic Garage. So in this video I thought we will never film something like what you've seen on the table because our toolboxes are just filled with tools like ratchets and wrenches and sockets. We are not ready for the future, let's call it, very bright future. So you've seen the video with the A6A8 where we've done the major repair for the camshaft, hydraulic lifters, timing chains and everything. So the first car, the Audi A6, which has exactly the same 48 volt mild hybrid system, left the garage with no noise after the repair. So happy days after 8,000 pounds bill, obviously the car was repaired and the owner did contact me a week, a couple of days later, that he have actually a low coolant level. So there were no leaks, unfortunately, we don't drive the cars on the long journeys and because the engine is holding low RPM, sometimes there can be a small airlock somewhere in the system and it will take a bit of a time until the airlock will get into the expansion tank and the level will be lower. So he did add some coolant, since then it looks fine, so happy days. Uh, what we can't say about happy days is the Audi A8, which is in very sad condition after a big build and we have a problem with the 48 volt system. So as you seen on the video, when we try to start up the car, every single time we try to actually crank it directly onto the 12 volt starter motor, which means the engine will be cranking and will build a bit of oil pressure. Oil will get everywhere before the startup actually, and it should help a bit before the first startup. So that is exactly what we did as usual, as always. And the system somehow picked up that the engine was cranking and the ignition was on and everything, but it didn't fire up obviously. So how the system is working, the 12 volt starter is there obviously just for the first startup. That means when it's first startup in the morning, it will start on the 12 volt starter motor from the 12 volt battery. And afterwards the start stop system and the next startups are on 48 volt system. So you don't hear any mechanical sound off from the starter motor. It will start up from the alternator generator through the belt. That's why you have the complicated pull in the front what usually needs replacing. And obviously how the car was standing on the ram here for two, three, four weeks, don't remember. The battery slowly drained uh, and when the car tried to start up on the 48 volt system, it gets onto the critical low voltage and the system was blocked, which we didn't know. But as you can see on the video, the engine tried to start up on the 48 volt system and it didn't have enough power to spin the engine through the belt. So it turned slowly, turned slowly, then it make a noise. That's why we have also a fault in the ECU, like there's a mechanical issue with the generator. And afterwards the system was like, oh well, there's not enough voltage or not enough power uh, in the 48 volt system. I have to start up on the 12 volt system. So the car was running, everything was fine, except there was loads of fault codes, which we usually will get after the engine removal with need deleting and stuff. And slowly but surely the engine died. So there was absolutely no power. We did measure the battery. It was like under 11 volts. So we put it on the jump pack. The car was running and we were measuring if it's charging and it wasn't charging. So, you know, we were checking the ground cables, everything if we didn't done anything wrong. Everything was plugged in as it shouldn't been. Unfortunately, what happened is that the control unit, what is in front of me, block himself. And when the 48 volt battery is on critical low voltage, the alternator generator will not charge, which is a bit of a sad situation actually, because let's say your car will be parked up somewhere you're going to the airport, you're gonna leave it there, you're going on a holiday, your car will stay in the garage and the alarm system and everything is still running and it's draining the battery slowly, slowly. And obviously when you're gonna get back and you will not notice it and somehow the car will struggle to start and it will get under critical low voltage, it became a non-runner because the gearbox, power steering and some other systems are running only on 48 volts, which means if that system is off, it's not working. So we will have to get to the dealership or do something with it. So in our situation, we check everything what we could with our special tool wall we have for the electric. 
We couldn't find anything wrong with it. I was reading loads of articles about this 48 volt system in America, in Europe, in the UK. Loads of people have a problem with it. Also like 2022 cars, RS6s, A6s, A7s. Usually it's the 48 volt system which is creating the hassle and problems. So on the new cars is under warranty of course and UK is a bit of a special country and for some reason they don't have the extended warranty like Europe or America. So on the Slovakian forums or Czech forums uh, some guys send me screenshots from the forums like it should be extended seven years warranty and they should be replacing the alternator generator for free with the battery or without the battery it depends if it's damaged or not. So the whole problem with the alternator generator is I'm not sure if the unit is sealed or there's a gasket but uh, somehow moisture can get inside or even rainwater can get inside and it can cause a faulty it can cause electric problems with the generator also the other problem is the relay which is where's the relay over here that can be a problem obviously you can re replace the relay but in our case it was the unit would needs reflashing or something like i said we don't do it I'm not sure if it's possible to do it with all this. Uh, we don't even have all this, so I'm not sure. But obviously, uh, after long searching online, I did find a company who can actually do the unit. But uh, because you have a big lithium battery, you can't send it because nobody will pick it up because it's dangerous to be sending lithium batteries with post. And we only have to send this unit for repair. So it should be all done now. I was talking with the gentleman who done the repair. He did told me we have to make sure the battery is fully charged. So obviously when we check the voltage when it was removed, it was like 38 volts and right now it's fully charged. I'm really hoping it will be working now because it took so much time to tear it apart and it took so much time while it get done. The car standing here, the owner wants to have the car back, which I fully understand and obviously it is a hassle what we didn't expect. So in the near future, whoever is coming to us, we will have to unplug the system fully. So nothing is plugged onto the battery, it's not draining the system. Of course, we have to buy a 48 volt charger. These batteries can't be charged with normal 12 volt and you have to be charging it slowly because you have cells inside. And obviously they are very sensitive on quick charging, discharging and it's like a bit of a sensitive system. So you have to be careful with it. And yeah, um, all we have to do now, all you see on the table here and over there, we have to put it back together. And I'm really hoping it will be working. We're just gonna delete the folds afterwards and the car will be sound. So stay tuned. I'm really hoping the car will be running, charging. All the fold codes will be deleted. They will never come back again. And finally, we can listen to the engine afterwards when it's gonna be fully warm up if the noise before and after is different and just to show you if whatever we replaced saw out noise coming from the engine. So let's get to it. Okay guys, so we did manage to put it back together. However, there was a small issue because it was like two weeks later and this bracket, which is holding the battery in place in the whole housing, I didn't put it back in there, it's just stay in my hand. So I was wondering like where it is going, but we did manage to find the original place where it came from and it's all put it back together. It's quite heavy unit to be honest. So. They tried to save the polar bears by reducing the emissions, but they definitely didn't save them by adding weight. And right now, which is a bit of a confusing information, look how many volts we have. Zero. So the reason why we have zero volt is that the control unit, which is in there and is not plugged in, the relay is basically open circuit and it's not letting any voltage out and the whole complicated system is controlled by that unit, how the battery is charging, how it is letting out all the power to the generator. So it is quite a complicated system. I am a bit uh, shocked how it's actually complicated because 
normal human being in front of the house just can't repair it. You have to go to the dealers or some very, very, very high tech specialists to sort out these 48 volt system faults. And the next step will be put it back in the boot, which is probably another one hour of job with the control unit. This is actually the changer from 48 volt to 12 volt. And let's hope for the best that it will run. So I put the battery in the boot, everything was plugged in, unfortunately we're still having the same fault so let me just quickly open the diagnostic but the fault just keep beeping on and obviously I think we're still gonna have all the faults like before so there's no communication with the power steering or the gearbox module so I don't know what's actually going on but uh, even with the auto scan it's just showing too many faults and too many malfunctions obviously gearbox and power steering is quite important module to work in the vehicle so if there's no communication with, the, with these two modules it's a bit of a problem however on the first startup before the engine did try to start up on the alternate generator we didn't have absolutely no faults and after you've seen the footage on the beginning all these faults were just coming on so it just looks like to me it's like some kind of a low voltage running system so everything would not necessarily will be switched off but uh, yeah just to make sure we're gonna put the car on the ramp one more time and we have to double check everything like the wiring ground cables and if we didn't know anything wrong so yeah back on the ramp okay guys so the Audi 8 is on the ramp I would really like to end the video and be just telling you a lovely story how it's all done how to repair it how everybody is happy but this is not the case we are filming everything even if it doesn't go well and obviously this is the case when things went wrong unfortunately we don't have the sort of knowledge about the 48 volt system the mild hybrid is quite complicated we don't have the tools for it we don't really want to repair it because we, we just don't have the facility to do it. But it is here and there is a problem with the mild hybrid system, we need to sort it out. So when I put everything back together, I was sort of happy because I was measuring the terminals onto the battery and in the front terminal for the jump pack, let's say. And obviously the voltage was over 14 volts on the 12 volt battery on the back. And there was more than 13 volts on the terminal in the front. However, that was just a 12 volt battery and the 48 volt system is still not working. So you've seen uh, all the faults when I plug it on the diagnostic, everything is coming on the cluster. There's a fault, something is no communication and this and that. So obviously it's not working as it should be. And well, we have to sort it out somehow. So I'll show you what we check so far, what we find out, what we figure out, what we think is wrong with it will be the solution because we never done one, so, and I still have to contact the owner of the vehicle. The owner, of course, know that we put the engine back in, it did start, it's run, there's no more noise coming from it, but uh, we keep an update it every single time when we do a step-by-step -step like what's happening. And uh, I will give him a call after all this, see what he says, I have to give him an update, but uh, let me show you first of all what we find out. We check everything million times and obviously the terminal for the 48 volt is here, uh, the 12 volt is behind it. So if you're saying like 
by removing the engine we damage something well that there's nothing what can be damaged by the 48 volt 12 volt because it's done really safe way and obviously as soon as you will unplug it from the terminal there's there's nothing coming to it and secondly you have the relay on the 48 volt butcher in the boot which is not connected until the engine is running so i don't see how we couldn't dump something wrong if you working on these engines you probably know the engine removal is pretty simple you gotta disconnect the hoses dc is on the side here so there's nothing what we couldn't done really wrong with the 48 volt system to affect it stop working i personally think i don't know the capacity of the battery in the boot uh, how the car was standing for so long maybe the capacity is low and how the engine tried to start out on the 48 volt system we've seen in the previous videos just used up the battery and somehow the alternator generator died the reason why i'm saying the alternator generator is dead because when i start up the car the first time uh, i was quite happy because well i wasn't happy because all the lights were on cluster but what i was happy i was checking the terminal and on the 12 volt battery we have like over 14 volts so i was like happy days is charging uh, before we start up the car, the 12 volt was charged, the 48 volt charged, what you've seen, and obviously um, is not charging. The reason why it's not charging because this stupid system should be charging the 48 volt battery first of all. From there, it's going into this module, which is changing the 48 volt to 12 volt, and then it's charging the 12 volt and it's distributing all the power into the car. So what was happening in those five minutes when I was in the car, it was running, I was trying to do diagnostic and some checks. In five minutes, that battery was charged, sorry, that battery was charging the 12 volt battery through the module, but the alternate generator was not charging from the front, the 48 volt system. So in five minutes, we have exactly the same fault. So the battery in the boot is dead. We have the fault with the power distribution on the cluster again and they are the same fault codes like before we send the module for the repair so at the moment we are in the situation when we waste probably two weeks of time stripping the battery send it for the repair get it back put it back together charge it find out this and that and we didn't get absolutely anywhere we are exactly in the same point as we were before so the engine is running from the mechanical perspective there's nothing wrong with the engine it will start there's no fault codes in the engine except no communication from the gearbox and the power steering and i personally think somehow this car don't know that that is not charging the 48 volt system and it will juice up the battery uh, and then it will throw up a fault with the power distribution because i was checking the terminals which is directly on the alternate generator from the side and it's not charging over 48 volts, which it should be. So all the wirings, all the grounds, cables are connected where they should be. So that was the 100% check. All the connectors from this side, from underneath, which is there from the gearbox and power steering are plugged in. So there's nothing what we forgot to plug in actually. So at this particular point, this is the first, first time that it happened. It will be a very expensive lesson learned for us, I would say, because we are wasting our time. Uh, the customer is pissed off, obviously, because he wants to have this car back, which I fully understand. And obviously, we are wasting our money to try to get it sorted. So this is the situation so far. I have to speak with the owner now, what he said, because he have an update till now. <laughs> and from now, I have to give him another update. So let me give him a call and I'll tell you what's the outcome. Okay, guys, so I did spoke with the owner of this beautiful vehicle and he sort of understand and don't understand the situation. However, I do understand his situation that the car came for a mechanical repair and after a huge bill, which is the warranty company paying anyways, there is a problem with the system. Would we didn't done anything wrong with it, but unfortunately it happened in the house and we are, I wouldn't say responsible for it, but we have the hassle here. The problem would need to be sorted out because obviously the customer will not pick up the car in this condition. It's, it's not drivable. You can't select the gate. There's loads of fault codes. And the only way where the car will probably go is to Audi. So we definitely don't want to go to Audi or the main dealer route because I know exactly what will happen. They will replace everything, module, battery, generator for new things, plus labor, there will be a seven grand bill and there's no guarantee we'll sort out the issue. So at this particular point, we are probably more forced to do it and we are more forced to pick up the knowledge about the system and more forced to 
educate ourselves how the system is working, what's the fault codes, why it happened, why we don't want to have the problem again. So obviously we have to make sure in the future if you're going to work on the cars, this will never ever ever happen again. So again, um, hard life. But anyways, um, the owner did told me that he will keep the car here. Meanwhile, of course, I will be updating him on the situation, see what will be the outcome. For now, I will put it back on the wheels. Uh, we have to push it over there where it was because we have another jobs coming on the ramp. I have to speak with the company who've done the module in the battery for us because obviously they did remove the fault but the fault came up again because the battery was drained again. So we are wasting a bit of our time and money to get the problem sorted. And I have to give him a call tomorrow because today is Sunday, uh, that there is probably a fault with the generator. On their website, I did find out they are capable to do the generators as well. So we will see what will be the outcome from there. Worst comes to worst, we will be replacing the generator for I don't know how much I have to find out. But obviously, it is a tricky situation and there's nothing we can do. That's the beautiful side of these mechanical jobs that you are repairing something. Meanwhile, something else will be damaged and this and that. So just another day really at the workshop. But yeah, meanwhile, this is coming off the ramp. We have a RS4 over there with the potential spray boot, what needs doing. There was a fully rebuilt engine, what was running for five minutes and then it seized up. So we have to take the engine out, strip it fully down, investigate what happened, what's the solution for the repair. So another interesting video, or not interesting video, maybe, decide, is coming. And we will give you an update on the hybrid system because obviously these cars from especially 2021 are produced in, in like really high numbers. And if we had the problem, you might have the problem, somebody else might have the problem. So. We will try to pass you as much as information what we will get uh, on this whole platform with the 48 volt mild hybrid system and we'll see how it goes. Meanwhile, thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video. Take care for now and see you in the next one. See ya.